passed away. We wanted men. Welcome to episode 142 of the Smugglers Galaxy podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. I'm Glenn, and with me as always is Jason. I'm a little exhausted, just getting back from Disney, got back about 2 o'clock this afternoon, woke up at around 5-ish, you know, you're stirring around and you look at the clock and go, it's 5, 5.30, let me just get up and go home, Yeah, you know, save save the tears for another day and just... Power get through. It over with. Yep. Huh? Power through it. You got to do it. Yeah. Just, just rip the band aid off and kiss Minnie and Mickey goodbye and come back to reality. It looked like it was a fun time. Dude, it was an amazing time. Um, I'll get into it in a minute, but I've never seen it. I've seen it low, but I've never, the, the last time I thought I was spoiled in 2019 when we went, was able to do a whole bunch of stuff. This trip, I was able to do probably double the stuff Mm -hmm. because there was just no crowd levels there. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I was exhausted, but it was an amazing trip. If you can hit Disney, right. It's, it's an amazing, like you're saying trip. Cause there was one time when the kids were maybe like five or seven ish. Mm -hmm. We went after labor day because in, in New York you go like the kids go back to school after labor day. So there's like three or four days because your Labor Day's on a Monday, and they start on a Thursday, so you have that Tuesday, Wednesday. The kids uh-huh. down south are already in school. Yeah. Every single ride, every single character was just walk up, and we were just like, what What happened? What? How did this happen? And it's like, you just hit the right day. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Um, because, yeah, it, it's you have uh, Memorial Days next week, so you've got people that are probably saving up to, to get out of school, and yeah. I just I hit it right, man, but... I've got a story about Universal. Universal was fun, but um, they have like college or graduation nights. And I was hanging out with my son on Thursday. And I thought you were going to say, I was hanging out with some high schoolers. <laughs> no, it, no, these are, all it was right, worse than right, high school. All right. It was worse than high schoolers. It was middle school. Oh, yeah. So about, they shut the park at six for this middle school party. Right? Cause I do it for middle school. They do it for co- high school and they do it for college. Grand night. And about four ish. It just started like a rush of a bunch of middle school kids. And he was like, Oh crap. It's that night. So uh, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me run for it. Dad. <laughs> you run. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. How was your week? My week was good. I picked up a couple things. Yeah, um, I did get? get Hunter, the vintage collection Hunter from Amazon. Nice. That arrived. And then my pre-order for Pose X-Wing arrived. But the X-Wing is upside down on the package. Mm-hmm. It's packaged right because the figures are in the lower left like it should be. But someone, instead of putting the X-Wing in upside down, uh, right side up, it's upside down. So it looks like he's doing a barrel roll. Which Yeah, I... I got mine, my uh, Pose X-Wing, and um, I've been hearing a lot of people complain about it, like they were having issues with the ship. Um, yeah. Mine looks okay, but the nose doesn't isn't pinched together right, if that makes sense. There's a there's a seam in the hmm. ship and going down the middle of the ship, and it looks like they didn't pinch the nose quite together right. But other than that, I and then BB-8, just it doesn't look like they either – didn't make the ship to fit BB-8 or BB-8. I think I think they more didn't make BB-8 to fit the ship in right, right in the ship, no. and it just the the eject button doesn't work very well with BB-8. Well, I was just gonna say that. Well, they, that's supposed to be interchangeable with like R2D2, so you could change it out. So I don't, you know, I haven't been opening well, my Micro Galaxy stuff. The, the thing, and I just thought about it as I'm thinking about it now is r2d2's got legs so there's a there's a post that fits 
you know, R2 D2 would fit in and the legs would go underneath the yeah. post where the eject button would be. BB8 doesn't have that because mm. it's a ball. So. I miss BB8. I know I mentioned this the other <laughs> the other week where Grogu killed BB8, but I do miss BB8. I miss Chewbacca. I want to see these characters more often. And mm. uh it's like, where's my friends? Yeah. I want to see the oh well, yeah, like you said. Eh. Yeah. But you that was see the, him and, go ahead. Yeah, that no, was that all was, you got. That's all I got this week. It was a quiet week, and I'm glad I got the X-Wing upside down because I've got this micro collection, micro focus now of miscarded micro galaxy stuff or errors and stuff like that. So I'm ex- I'm, I'm excited. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is even better than just the regular X-Wing. Yeah. This is awesome. like Christmas. That's cool. I um I'm trying to think what I else I got. I don't think I got anything that wasn't else that wasn't non-Disney. So I'll I'll get into the I can get oh you know what let me get into the Disney here's here's the best thing I got from Disney World oh oh you the got Droid the chopper Depot, I got the Droid Depot chopper yeah look at you mom, yeah, mom, I waited mom. a year for this bad boy hey, duty sound feeling about that. I would yeah I could play it but it's not gonna pick up because of yeah. Zoom so I'm not even gonna play it we'll but, try it let's see all right let me go get the thing. Oh, you've got to get a remote. I didn't realize it's just that. right there. Oh, he's getting off from his chair. He's walking across the room to grab the remote, and now he's coming back to his chair. He's plopping now I down sit back his down. chair. Yeah, let's. See. I was just narrating your movement there. You can hear it. I can hear some of it. Now it stopped. It stopped. It's it stopped. Yeah, it's not working. Well, it's the, it's I'm not going to edit that out. So, <laughs> sorry for the last minute. No, we heard but, the start of it, but okay. But I mean, it it the 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 wheel, this little wheel that they got underneath is, you know, it. I'm really impressed with it. It was expensive. It's the price of a normal. It's a hundred uh, bucks. Droid right? Depot. So. Hundred bucks. I, uh, yeah, it was like one twenty. It's a but, Ben Franklin and a Andrew Jackson. I guess. Yeah, sure. Is, that, is Andrew Jackson on a twenty dollar bill? Yes. Yeah. So it's a Ben Franklin and an Andrew Jackson. Oh wow. I mean, but it's built just. I mean, built just like a Droid Depot. You can take them apart because look, I just took the wheel, the bottom wheel off, the third wheel off, yeah, third wheel off. So, but I was that was that was the biggest purchase I made because um, I've been waiting for that one. My, my wife would not. I. Um, was trying to, I kind of wanted to build another Savvy Saber, but I was told no. And by the time I got back around there during the event, they had closed to that Savvy's. Mm. So Savvy's I talked junkyard. to him. Yeah, Savvy's Junkyard. So um, I couldn't, make, well, I would have gotten in a lot of trouble. So I did not get a Savvy Saber. And you didn't build a droid because you bought one that was pre boxed. Exactly. Yeah. If I had to have built Chopper, I would have built Chopper, but they had them already done. So I was happy with that. Uh, what else did I get? I got a... Oh, you, uh, you. so you've been to Galaxy's Edge and you've seen they have like the metallic AT-AT that's in the toy booth. What's an AT-AT? at <laughs> Yes. That thing with yes, four I've legs it. on it, man. Yeah. Was it available for sale? I thought it was just display. They made a mini one. Oh, Okay. So they made one that's basically well, I can't call it micro. It'd be more like Action Fleet because Action Fleet they nothing was to scale. Yeah. So it's about the size of an Action Fleet at at, but it's the same at at. Yeah. So I did that. I bought a plush Wampa because it was Wampa. It's a Wampa. Yeah. It, and then um, we, I was always looking for hats, and they had a hat that said Star Wars in Arabic. And yes, had, like, I saw that one. And it had the Ahsoka, like her head on the top of it. You know what? Funny enough, this week, I took a photo of that the last time I was at Disney because I'm like, I got to figure out what this is. Mm-hmm. And I got home and then I figured out the first two, oh, the first two letters in Arabic. I'm like, oh, that's Star Wars. And then I kept yeah. the photo. And this week I had to clear off space for my phone. And I'm like, oh, I remember that. Hat. And I deleted it. So it's funny because I know exactly which hat you're talking about. Yeah. So I had seen it. Um, 
at Star Traders right off of Star Tours, and I'm like, let me run through Galaxy's Edge real quick. And then I went back to Star Traders and, and bought it before it uh, shut down uh, because I'd been looking for a really cool hat. And whoever sold Disney their Nike hats, I want your contract because everywhere you turn, they, they have these three major hats. There's like three hats in every shop, and they're all Nike hats. So whoever mm -hmm. sold whoever sold those to Disney, good job. Probably Nike. Probably Nike, yeah. And then uh, I bought a – I went to the I'm gonna, outlet. I'm going to go out on the limb and think maybe Nike made a deal. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yes, Nike. Um, and then I went to the outlet store last night, which was a cluster. I'll get into that. And all I found was an ad at T-shirt. It's kind of funny. Uh, I bought it for, for Mandy. But it's got a, a snow – it's got a stormtrooper that throws a wrench and says fetch. And then the ad at runs after it and then gives it back to him. It's a, you know, it's comic. Yeah. And it drops him on top of it. And it was kind of funny. So uh, let's, let's stop hinting. Let's just go into it. Is that all you got? You want to just go into it? Just, let's yeah. Just, you I, drove I down wrote on... notes, dude. I wrote oh, notes. Right, just do your notes, man. So, all right. So Thursday, I drove down Tuesday night and did six the, hours. Six hours, yeah, it's about seven, six, seven to eight hours, depending on how many stops I did. So I was down there. I was traffic. Uh, yeah, I'm about, about to do this myself. <laughs> yeah, give yourself seven hours. Get seven to eight. I, I normally add an hour on because you know there's going to be stops. You're going to have to go to the bathroom. You're going to have to get gas. You know, there's there's things. So I'm going to push uh, it to five. There you go. Why not? Kids, hold it. We're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need gas. We're just going to push. We're just going to go. We're just going to go. So, um, but I got down there before my hotel room was ready. So I went by, there's a new shop down there called uh, Echo Base. Uh, that's about 15, 20 minutes from the, uh, there's number one, there's a bunch of shops down, a bunch of toy shops down there. Uh, it's some of the best toy hunting outside of Cincinnati, I think. Outside um, of Atlanta, I think you mean. No, it's outside of, it, they've got more per. It's better quality, yes. Better, better. Imagine having like five second chances. Okay, it's that well, kind of stuff. That's, that wasn't there when I lived there twenty years ago. Yeah, no, it because um, and I went by there, and they have a bunch of uh. That's where I sent you the uh, salacious crumb. Don't talk crumb. about that. Don't talk about that. I might go back and get that someday. <laughs> if you start pointing collectors to it, they're gonna grab it. Fine, I won't. Uh, I sent Jason. The, no, no, not the big one. Oh, okay. This was a little one. This was yes, a little, the pizza one. The Someone pizza else sent one. that to me this past. It might have yeah, been was, Barry. Barry might have sent that to me later, okay. or a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that was that was at Echo Base. Uh, it was like I a mashup that, of the Noid. Yes. And Salacious Crumb mm -hmm. on card. It was like a custom. Right, and it was like fifty bucks. Yeah. Um. So, but they had a good select. They had a bunch of. They, he said that they had a bunch of Clone Wars stuff come in, a bunch of box Clone Wars stuff. He actually had like the Mandalorian ship still in box. So he had, a, uh, and he had a bunch of good vintage stuff. His prices I thought were pretty fair, but I didn't. The only thing I bought was a uh, a mighty, not a mighty mugs, but the the bigger like a Wampa thing, but the precursor to pops. Whatever. Yes. Thing. Yeah. It was like it was Mighty Mugs. They kind of evolved since then. Oh, but they okay. were Mighty Mugs. Um, so the when, this was before the thing that you push on the head. Yes, they were just like giant heads, and they were all the same mold, but they painted differently. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So they had a Wampa one there for like eight bucks. So I picked him up. When you say, to... sorry, when you say Mandalorian ship, are you talking about the Hazlab Razor Crest? No, I'm talking about the one, the one from Clone Wars. The one that it. it I think they they wanted. It's a troop transport, Mandalorian troop transport. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, the wings still do the flappy thing, but they don't spin. A Clone Wars Mandalorian, not a Disney Plus Mandalorian. Okay, that's Correct. where I was confused. Correct. Okay, I said Clone Wars. I said they had a big Clone yeah, Wars. Yeah, but maybe I'm a little too tired today <laughs> to catch on. Anyways, yeah, I'll stop. I feel you, dude. I feel you. It's been yeah. Um, and but they had a good good selection of vintage. They had two or three men on card figures. It, I um, good it was prices? definitely huh. I thought good. it was fair pricing. Okay. I think he was wanting like three hundred bucks for the boxed Clone Wars um, Mandalorian ship, which it's expensive, but that ship's an expensive ship. Yeah. Um. 
and he had a good selection of just everything. He, he his biggest selection was Star Wars, but it's you know had a you know hit Ghostbusters and He Man and um a couple like one or two things from Back to the Future. Uh, no Bill and Ted stuff. Uh, what else? But you know had a couple of ten toys, so it was a good good mashup. And then like in the back, I think what the guy's main business is is a um screen printing shop. So the screen printing shop's in the back, and then his toy shop is in the front. Oh, nice. So I guess he was like, I have extra space, so I'm going to open a toy shop. Um, and that's that one's called Echo Base, and then I went to Gods and Monsters. And uh, they're they're a little bit more high-end. Uh, their they're, they're, uh, Star Wars collection is a lot smaller than Echo Base, and it's a lot of newer stuff, but it's still worth going check out because you never know what you're going to find in a toy shop. And... Uh, as I was leaving, I found some headshots. They had a Steve Bloom headshot that I thought was an autograph, but uh, it turned out to be from uh, Star Wars Weekends. Because mm-hmm. if you didn't, if you didn't get to meet the person as you walked out, you can get a headshot from mm-hmm. whatever from guest services as you were walking out. So then they say, "Oh, we've got more of them." So I picked through them, and they had a uh, a hair a uh, Vanessa William, a uh, Vanessa Vanessa Marshall, Marshall, and then they had a Jason Taylor, or not Jason Taylor, the guy they played uh, Ezra. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Ezra it's, Taylor. No, what's his name? People are yelling at us. Yeah, it's not, it's not Somebody, Jason. It's not Jason. Ezra uh, Bridger. I'm uh, talking to Google Taylor. right now. We're Taylor looking Gray. It up. Taylor was, Gray. Taylor. I told you it was Taylor something. It started or with the T. Iman Isfandi. We got to get used to that name. Yeah. At least we saw him in a hologram. Yeah. Me and Ahsoka. Yeah. So So, awesome toy show stores in Orlando now. Yeah, awesome. I I I like I like hunting in Orlando. Um but how far away is this from property? Property, I'd say it's probably 20, 30 minutes. Because I'm sure this is something that people would want to do if they go to Disney. They're gonna want to toy hunt. So yeah, if uh, you're if it, you're close, those two shops are two of the closest shops to the main to to Disney and Universal. I think Gods and Monsters is pretty much across I four from uh, Universal. So it's about thirty minutes north of on on I four north. Yeah, from okay. Disney. From Disney. So, um, yeah, both shops are definitely. If you got got an hour, got a half a day to kill, it's those. Both, I'd, I'd check both of those out. If if you're into vintage stuff, I check out Echo Base before Gods and Monsters. Um, yeah, Echo Base is the place I think I want to go. Yeah, I would check out Echo Base, but Gods and Monsters is that other place that you want to go to. Okay, so you went to toy stores and you bought a couple things. Yep, and then I went and started checking out uh, downtown Disney or Disney yeah. Springs. Didn't really and. <laughs> Pleasure Island, sir. We're going to go yeah, all the way pleasure. back. <laughs> go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, I was kind of, I didn't feel it, man. I, I don't know why. I guess you you finally start to realize how small that place is. I know it's huge, but I remember it being like more Disney or Disney doesn't control it as much as they used to. Am I making or as many Disney shops? Yeah, it's kind of more of a mall, like the mall of, um, Mall of Millennia, which is another mall. It's a high end mall. They've got a lot of high end shops. Yeah. Uh, the West Side is very much like the it used to be. The toy store has been cut in half because they put the void in there, but then they closed down the void during the pandemic. So the void's never returned. Right. But I like that that side because it's never it really hasn't been changed since you know 20, 25, 30 years. Right. And I like it for that. But it's the middle part where Pleasure Island used to be. That's been upscaled. That's where they added the Coke store and uh, Chicken Guy, which my family loves. They love that that place and a bunch of other shops like Vera Wang and stuff like that. Yeah, they had some they had some high end stuff. Um, I walked into a jewelry store and I've, I've kind of been looking for a right hand ring, and they picked one out and it looked great on my. You know, I loved it. Looked great. It fit fit great. And they're like. Uh, guess how much it is? I said a thousand dollars or like more. I said fifteen hundred dollars. They go, no, it's twenty five hundred dollars. And I took it off and put it down. And they, I looked at them. They're like, well, what's your budget? And I said like two fifty. Two fifty. 
And he like they like rolled their eyes. I'm like, and I'm in my mind, I'm like, you're at Mother Disney Springs, man. Why do you why are you trying to sell a twenty five hundred dollar watch at Disney freaking Springs? But I guess what you're saying, they've upgraded it so much that why not sell a twenty five hundred dollar ring at Disney Springs? Yeah. Um, You've been priced out of that myself. Well, we'll get to that too. Disney's too expensive. Oh, we'll dude, get we'll to get to that in a minute. I've got Jungle Cruise pissed me off. But anyway, so um, Did about the... three, right after three o'clock. So I was there for a little bit, grabbed a drink, kind of getting in the getting in the mood, uh, you know, Disney mood. Uh, about three o'clock, but they called to say my room was ready. So I drove over to the resort, checked in. I stayed at All Star Sports, which believe it or not, for a single person or for a couple, it's not a bad resort. I don't see how families of four or five can fit in those rooms because they're very small rooms. They're 200 square feet. Yeah. It's a tight fit. I would have, I think my wife and I would have trouble in that room. Oh, we've done it. It's, it's possible. It's just not, the intent is that you're not going to spend a lot of time in your room. You're going to be out of it. And that's where Disney wants you because cha-ching, 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 you're not going to spend money in your hotel room. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and then another part that stunk about staying in the value resort is you were at the last of all the bus stops. Yeah. So you're walking the furthest when after a day at Disney. Uh, but they yeah. gave me, I, I don't know how I got the room I got, but they put me on the, what they called the touchdown room, which a touchdown section, which is right next to everything. But I was on like the back half of the building. So I didn't care. I mean, it wasn't as bad. So my walk was, I had like a five minute walk to the bus stop, which was great. Um, so, I, you know, and I've been to where you have like a 10 minute walk to the bus stop, uh, you know, because like Caribbean beach, like each building has its own bus stop yeah. here. There's only one bus stop. So that's what the bad, those were the bad parts about staying in a, in a value. Um, the rooms were a little thin. The walls were a little thin. I can hear people taking showers. It wasn't bad, but you could hear them turn the water on. Um, but that's all you really heard. But other than that, the bed, the bed was comfortable. I got a king size bed, I guess, because I'm a sing. You know, I was a single. They gave me the king size bed. I didn't ask for it, but that's what they gave me. Um, and then I rode the Skyliner. So then, what I did was I got on to the bus to st- the studios and rode the Skyliner to Epcot, and then rode it back to Caribbean Beach and hopped off to take a um, to go to. Hopped off at Caribbean Beach to get a bus to go to the studios. I waited 40 minutes for the bus to show up at Caribbean Beach to take me to the studios. Why didn't you just, from Caribbean Beach, why didn't you just jump on the Skyliner again? It doesn't go to the studio. It doesn't go to, I'm sorry, to um, downtown Disney. Disney Springs. Oh, okay. All right. It doesn't go to the Springs. And you can't take a bus. It does go to studios. It doesn't go to the Disney Springs. Correct. Sorry, I got confused. You can't go from the studios to the Springs, to Disney Springs on a bus. So... Um, and then I went and had, which Skyliner was awesome. It was a good ride. It's, it's a fun, just a fun, get you in the Disney mood, you know, type yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's free. A, it's a nice gimmick. Yeah. I, I could see if I, I would, it's a good way to get you to stay at a Skyliner resort. They need to expand it really. Yeah, they really do. Can you hear my dog barking? I heard one bark. Okay, cool. So it's not bad. Uh, anyway, he, him and the cat are playing. Um, so then I went and I went to Boathouse. I had dinner at Boathouse, which I had a steak that was a little, you know, I paid up for it, but it was a little bitty steak. It was about a, a quarter of the size as I was expecting. But, you know, you're in this hot sun all day. You don't need a big, you know, pound of meat. You yeah. know, so it, it worked out fine. Uh, one yeah, tip I, mean, I will I mean. tell you about Boathouse is... Uh, if you don't have reservations, there's tables in the back that are that are first come first served for like two people, and you can just walk back there and sit down if they're available, and you can mm. eat at the bar. So, a little tip about Boathouse, yeah. So, I got that from Jordan, our buddy yeah. Jordan. Nice. And then I went back. I went, and uh, that was my that was my first Disney day. I, I'm going to try to go fast because I'm I don't want to bore you. Uh, I'm not bored. I'll tell you if I'm bored. Okay, you could speed me up if I go too fast. If I faster, if, I'm, if yes, tell me more faster. intense. Yeah. <laughs> so the the next day, I woke up. I went to Epcot. It was my Epcot and uh, the after hours event day um, at Hollywood Studios. 
So I rope dropped Epcot and walked straight. So rope, I got there at eight and rope, they dropped the rope at eight 30. And then I went straight to soaring. So I went to that sort of side of the park road soaring and oh first i got the cosmic rewind i got the like group 12 or 14 on cosmic rewind 14 is what you sent me don't lie what one four is what you said 14 i got 14 so by the time i got i i was they were boarding me on they strapping me into soaring i got called the guardians so i was able to ride soaring then walk over to guardians oh is Guardians good? is from start to finish. It is the best. I, I I would have to go back and ride Pandora again, Flight of Passage, just to compare it. Yeah. But I rode everything. I didn't go to Animal Kingdom, so I didn't ride Flight of Passage. So I can't compare it. You know, I don't. It's been five years. Or it's been 19 since I rode Flight of Passage. But by far, I think it's the best ride on Disney property from start to finish. Nice. The cues are the the pre show in is one of the best pre shows I've ever seen. In that ride, hopefully I can ride it. We'll see, dude. I hope you can because it, you know what? If if you've got to buy lightning lanes, just tell the kids. I'm sorry, kids. I'm not They're buying not lightning it. lane. That's a ridiculous. <laughs> that is, it's not dude. going away, but I think it's ridiculous. It's my protest. Yeah, dude, I don't blame you. I did not buy Disney. I was watching the 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 wait times all week and did not buy Disney Plus. But the Disney Plus, Genie Plus, I'm happy I yeah. didn't. Yeah. Um, but because uh, you didn't need it. So anyway, Guardians and I can. I don't want to give away too much, but if you get sick, there's one scene where you're spinning around something that you're looking down on. Okay, I'm back. Was it me or you? I don't know. I think it might have been me. Okay, because yeah, you froze and I was ready to text you like, hey, I, I don't know if it's me or you, but uh, something's it's up tonight. It's saying my internet's unstable. I'm the oh, only good, one it's you. here. It's not me. Then it's me. So, um, but it, I don't know how much. So let me start that over again. There's one part where you're <laughs> spinning around something that's, it's a planet. You're spinning around a planet. No spoilers. It, it doesn't matter. It, but don't, if you get sick, <laughs> don't look at the planet. Look at, look at the track. Okay. But. It's the best. The, I can't. I don't want to give away spoilers because I you didn't do it to me on Rise, and that's the only thing I'm going to say about it is that's just okay. a tip. If you get sick, don't stare. Look, at the- look up. And, and <laughs> Close your eyes. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Yeah. Don't look Raiders at the, the last arc. Don't yeah. look at it. Close your eyes. Keep that <laughs> shut. Uh, but there's two of that part. There that 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 happens twice. Um, but oh, it it I oh. Yeah, that was worth going to Epcot for. As crappy as Epcot is right now, Riding Guardians is is probably the redeeming factor of Epcot. Okay. Uh, so then I walked over, did the single rider at Test Track, and that was a uh, walk in. You know, I was able to walk in, yeah. uh, walk on Test Track as a single rider because it doesn't matter when you're a single rider; it's all one big car. Then went over to Tat- Ratatouille. Which was a twenty minute wait, and it shut down on you. No, that was the second time I tried riding it. Oh, I didn't realize you went on it twice. Yeah, that was the second. I didn't. I only rode it once because uh, by the time the second time I tried riding, but anyway, let me get there for a second. I'll get there in a minute. Ratatouille, I, I enjoyed it. You'll enjoy it, especially since you like Ratatouille. It's one of my favorite Pixar movies. You're gonna enjoy it. I I thought it was an a a, a fair. A, out of ten, I'd give it an eight. You're okay. probably, you're gonna give it a ten because you like Ratatouille. Yeah. Uh, there's some cool effects on it that it, dude. Okay, so it's Rise of the Resistance. It's Ratatouille. It's uh, Mickey's Runner Rail More Runner Runaway Railroad are all trackless rides, and to watch what those cars do is amazing. Yeah. Because you're in a train, you're you're three or four in a row, and then all of a sudden you split off. Yeah, I mean, you come back together, and you just you're in a different order. Yep. And just watching those cars do that is mind blowing yeah. because you're just you're used to staying in a straight line. Um. Yeah. But it's anyway, it, huh? It's just different, and you're not you're an old schooler like me. Your brain doesn't think like that. Yeah. There's no track. Right. There's no track, so the cars can do what it's the cars are programmed to do whatever they need to do. And it's it's cool to watch. Um oh shoot, whatever. 
I had Regal Eagle for lunch. Yeah, and, how's uh, the barbecue? Because the uh, barbecue tonight, I've been uh, really into finding great barbecue here in Atlanta. So how was the barbecue at Regal Eagle? I had a hamburger with barbecue on it. Oh, forget it. Yeah, I did not because I went up to the lady. I'm like, would I get would you get the hamburger or the brisket? And she goes, get the hamburger. Oh, why? I don't because it had barbecue on it. It had like a barbecue uh, beef or or pork on top. And of how it. was it? How it was, was the good. Pork? Okay. It was the and I had the macaroni and cheese, and the macaroni and cheese was some of the best macaroni and cheese I ever had. Better than the I, ones that you get at the winter social? Um no. Yeah, it was yeah, no. it was better than my wife's yeah, macaroni and cheese. Oh, the Cajun stuff. Yeah, it's it was gooey. It was like gooey, gooey macaroni and cheese. So awesome! Yeah, wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh, what else did I do? So then the, I think that's when I went to ride. So what I was going to do is I was going to go ride Ratatouille again, let my food settle, and then go hit a buy a lightning lane for uh, Guardians. And that's when Ratatouille went down. Yeah. And they gave me a lightning lane, but I could never figure it out because it seemed like it was there and then I couldn't find it. And then by the time you figure out, oh, I'm going to walk back over there, it's just too dang I'm late. You're too tired. And I never went back and used it um, right. because then I, huh? So did you go back into Guardians? Yes. I went right. back and did Guardians. Okay. Did you and drink around was, the world? I did not drink wine because I had to leave at like 5.30. Did you uh, go on Frozen? No. That was a long wait. Uh, Journey to the Imagination. Yes. You went on that one? Yep. Were you bored? A little bit. Yeah, it's not what it used to be. Did you go on Nemo and Friends? No, because I just saw some fish two weeks ago. Living with the Land? No. Did you go to the Mexican Pavilion and ride that No. I did not ride that ride. Uh, Mission Space. No, because I didn't want to throw up. Okay. And then after all of Epcot, you went to Guardians, uh, Guardians, <laughs> Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> yes. Then I went to, then I went, oh, dude, the second time. So the first time I did Guardians, I'm just looking at my notes. I got yeah. September. The second time I got ran by a flock of seagulls. And I'm just sitting there like a little, because Guardians, they hype you up, dude. That car coaster is so awesome. Sorry, because they did it. They do such a good job of hyping you up, and then they blast music in there while you're riding. So mm-hmm. you're just you're on a coaster having an awesome time. September you know? by Earth, Wind, and Fire. By the way, yes, exactly. So because um, I think Taylor Swift's covered it. Oh, why don't they put the Taylor Swift version on? I don't know. Taylor version. <laughs> So, but I, and then I went and did soaring again and. And then yeah, you then went I to went Galaxy's back, Edge. <laughs> right. I went back to the hotel room, had a nap. Then I went oh, to Galaxy's Edge. Okay. You had to recover from your mm-hmm. morning. And so was the afternoon thing all of uh, Hollywood Studios or was specifically Guardian uh, Galaxy's Edge? Why do I keep it saying Guardian? It was all of Hollywood Studios. It was not a, oh, okay. it was not a Star Wars. Um, themed event which i think i would have had more fun if it was a star wars themed event um right. they let us in uh like at 6 45 to the park the event started yeah. at 10 so um it started at 10 at night yes 10 to it, 1 oh wow yeah that's way past my bedtime 10 o'clock is my bedtime. <laughs> it was a long night dude i think i did thirty thousand steps that day wow yeah wow the other the other days i was averaging like 20 and how are you um, feeling today today i'm good man i i think i'm still kind of hyped up i'm sore but i did the tylenol thing all weekend so i'm good i would wake up in the morning and my left ankle would be stiff i'd be like come on guy let's go yeah. time to move yeah it would take about 15 20 minutes for my ankle to loosen up do some stretching yeah i would i would have to stretch it a little bit so how was hollywood studios Hollywood Studios was all right. I was um, a little upset. Uh, I was able to get in. I was able to do Runaway Railroad uh, when I first got in there. Uh, then I went over, um, got a rental Moronto wrap and kind of walked around. Uh, and then I don't know why. I, I, so anyway, I enjoyed it. I rode Rise. I was able to ride Rise three times during the night, which to me was worth almost worth the price of admission. Yeah. It was pretty damn close to just to be able to walk off a rise and get right back on it. Yeah. 
Um, and that ride is amazing. That's it, hot. It <laughs> and I'm glad I because I wrote it right before the park closed. And there's two rooms where Ray is, and the first yes. room they sent me to BB8 was working, so oh, I was he's... able to see the whole pre-show. Yeah, and you're watching that that Ray. And and you see Ray for the first time, and I'm just I was emotional basket case at that moment <laughs> because I'm back at I'm back in Galaxy's Edge. It's been four years, um, and and I'm like I'm tearing up over Ray. I'm like, why the hell am I tearing up over Ray? And it's just because that's such an awesome effect. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Don't study it too closely because you can oh, I easily saw it. figure it out. Right. I kind of knew what they, you, you're like, okay, they have to do it this way. And you don't, I didn't see it until my third go through. Yeah. And then I saw it. It's still an amazing effect. But then the, the, the last other two times I went through BB eight, wasn't working oh, on the other bummer. side. Yeah. But I finally, there, did you know there's two versions of that ride? Ver Cause if you get on one cart, if you get on the red and blue cart versus the orange and silver cart, you see two different versions of the ad at. Yes, yes, I've done them both. Okay, one where you get shot up and you're in the front of it, facing it like on the same level as the front of the. I don't think it's an ATAT. I think it's an AT. No, it's an ad at. Uh, I didn't think it was. I thought it was the one from Rise of Skywalker. And then there's another one where you're kind of on the ground level and you get pulled back. Right, and you go up and yeah, and you see it from the side or something. Yeah, it's different, but yeah. I've done, but, it, but I was able to ride both. So I was awesome. I mean, uh, yeah, That's... that ride. Eh. And I see what people mean by it's like two or three rides in one. Yeah. It's an experience. It's not, it's more than a ride. Rise of the it's... resistance is pretty special. Uh, oh, dude. And you're, when you walk out and you see pose X wing, which is my favorite X wing, that black and orange X wing is just yeah. an amazing X wing. And you're able to get like five feet from it. It's like, and then they got people yelling at you. You got to go, got to go, got to go. Pretty um, immersive. Yeah, that 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 ride is an, is an amazing ride. Uh, yeah, I it's was, not a ride. It's an experience. It's an experience. It's yeah, it's not. A, it's literally it's like five things in one. Did the when you guys did the track, the thing with the uh, Mon, Mon Calamari in it, did it feel like it was moving? Yes. OK, mine did not. So that must not be working very well. It uh, felt a little bit, but then like. It kind of stopped. That's an awesome effect too. Cause like when it took off, you kind of felt like that it lurch, but it didn't yeah. move after that. It was you were just kind of standing still. I seem to remember hits. So when the that ship gets hit, there's a little blah, 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 blah. I don't know how oh. to describe it, a little shaking for the, the vehicle. But maybe I'm just misremembering things. I didn't I was expect I think that part wasn't working. But my son's a ride tech at Universal, and he's like, dude, if it doesn't kill the ride, we just forget it. We worry about it another day. Right. right. Um, so anyway, I went to went to Oga's, hung out in Oga's for like 45 minutes, and then went to um, – I got kind of upset. I got real upset with uh, Smuggler's Run because when you got to the, the, the chest room – they were like, this is your crew. Get in line. Let's go. And I'm like, I want to see the chest. Yeah. Room. Yeah. When you get inside the Falcon, they kind of make you either hurry up. The, both times that I've been, maybe three or four, I don't remember how many times, but every time I feel like I'm on there, mm -hmm. I can't even stay long enough to take a picture around the deterrent to table. Right. They so, won't, they don't even let you look at it barely. They barely let like, you look get at on it. there. And I'm like, well, this is the Falcon. I've waited my whole life for this. Chill. Right. At least when post COVID, when they give you the cards, it like they purposely gave you like five or 10 minutes in the Falcon to, to have fun. Do they give the cards anymore? No. So I'm glad that that wasn't just me. I'm glad it's that. And I'm glad that's it's it's upsetting that they're taking that experience away. But I'm yeah. glad it just it wasn't just my experience. Yeah. And so now I have this collectible that nobody knows anything about and I can't even sell <laughs> it's, them. It's. It's awesome to have, though. I mean, as as somebody who did it, it and Hondo was down, dude. Oh, the really? Animatronic, the, the huh? animatronic. The animatronic was down. Hello, my friends. I am not working. Keep going. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and then Savvy's was shut down. Uh, 
Doc Ondors, it feels like they turned the lights up in there versus five, four or five years ago. So I was, I thought I was able to see pretty good in there this go round. And there's a little bike, there's a uh, biker scout helmet that looks awfully familiar. Yes, that's been there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but you had anywho, fun. Yeah. Huh? You had fun. I had fun. There was no, I, what was funny is when I first got there, you see Chewy walk by and everybody's freaking out because, oh my God, it's Chewy, it's Chewy, it's Chewy. Ray's walking behind him about five, five, five or 10 feet behind him and nobody's paying attention to her. Well, did you see Mando and Grogu? No, I didn't. There was nobody roaming the land during the event. Oh. That was what, that was kind of upsetting. I would have, I would have figured Mando and Grogu would have at least popped out. They got to bring that Star Wars weekends back and do some sort of festival of heroes or something. Yeah. And then have, you know, the deep cuts, even the Kit Fistos, the Zam Wessels, the, the Boba Fett's, the Mandos, the Bo Katans. Like, come on. That's what we yeah. want. I did have a, a pretty, we can get into this after this, but I, I talked to somebody at, at, in Ogas who was on his fourth, it was either his fourth or fifth cruise on the uh, Star Cruiser. Star Cruiser. Yeah. What did he say? He enjoyed it. He and he came down from New York. This was before this the news broke, but he came down from he was coming down from New York. New York City? New yeah. The state out of the state of New York. Big state. Yeah. But 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 any but it it, <laughs> it also it included a flight. So you had to fly down here. It's yes. not like he was just driving. Yeah, so it's but twelve hundred bucks plus the flight plus all the ads. Right. So it was just like, dude, you you've spent how many thousand? You know, thirty thousand dollars to go to that thing. Jeez, it must be awesome. Must be, um, or it must it was awesome. But anyway, uh, so and that was my oh, and then uh, what was cool about this uh, after hours event? There was free ice cream, popcorn, and drinks. So I had a couple of ice cream bars, and then as I'm leaving the park, I grab a box, I grab a box of popcorn, and then I grab a couple of drinks from this vendor. And then you walk down and you grab a couple of drinks from that vendor. So I didn't have to buy drinks for my hotel room, nice. which was nice. Nice. <laughs> so that saved me $20 right there. Yeah. More like 300 with the way they price out bottles of water for six bucks. It, dude, yeah. It's $4 for a bottle of water and then like $5 for a bottle of Coke. And Jeez. my son is just like, this is crazy. It's that expensive. And I'm like, dude, they're getting this stuff probably for free. Yeah. Yeah. Or close and, to and, it. And, yeah, there there's no need for them to be charging five and six dollars for a bottle of coke. I mean, if Walmart's charging two bucks, you know the markups from uh, that's that's a big piece of profit right there. Yeah, for most of these stores, because someone was telling me about Home Depot and how they were losing money because the people would come in buy their wood and then go to the convenience shop to buy their their M and M's, their their sodas and stuff like that. And so some business developer said, no, 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 you need to put everything. At the front of the store too, you need to include the convenience store items, and they shot they saw their profit margin shoot up like twenty five percent or something along those lines. So there's a lot of money to be made in the small stuff, the the waters like that. So you they they have to be making lots of money off of right. that. I mean, what's also cool about Disney is if you're nice to the cast per, cast member while you're getting something else, and are like, hey, can I have a cup of water? Um, I had one lady give me like a full twenty ounce cup of water. Yeah. It, Tasted like butt because it was Florida water, but it was water. It's, you know? it's got sulfur in it. <laughs> it was horrible, but I was like, I'm not paying for it. Yeah, um, that's another that's another travel hack. When you go to these places, ask for a cup of uh, ice water, and you just bypass having to buy the Dasani. Right. Yeah. And in most not, places, get... they have them lined up. Sorry, most places they have them lined up on the shelf, so you just pull them over. Here you go. You can, you... Right, and they don't care because. It's it's yeah it's you know it's free but uh so yeah i was back to the hotel room a little after one and then was up at 8 a.m again or was at magic kingdom road drop right to the kingdom at eight the next day mm -hmm. so yeah i was uh, <laughs> it was it was the total opposite of me because i was in bed by nine and up at like six every morning so that i yeah. could get the virtual cues huh yeah i was just yeah yeah <laughs> so uh so you, then down. you went what huh go ahead no no i was able to ride tron i'm not going to go into all the details but 
was able to ride Tron and I was all in all very disappointed in Tron. Yeah, why? Number one, the theming sucked. Oh, keep talking for a second. Yeah, the theming really stunk because it just was blue and black and blue. Uh, and when they called my... Um, so I got my number called. I got my number called for Th- Tron while we were on um, Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Or wh- when we walked off Jungle Cruise, the Tron was called. It took us an hour from the time we checked in to the time we were on the cart, yes. on the ride vehicle. Guardians was like 15 minutes. Yeah. And fi- and 15 of that is pre-show. Yeah. For Guardians. Um, and the ride was over. It's like a 30 second. It feels like it's a minute coaster. Yeah, it is a minute. It's like 59, 58 seconds. It's something obscene like that. And it's like as soon as you get used to it, it's over. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, the 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 thing we had talked about about the uh where you could put your glasses in, yeah, it's about six inches deep. So you've got a lot of room to put stuff in there. Um, because you could put your cell phone and your glasses and stuff in there and it would work. Um, I would if I was you, I'd buy a band. I'd buy a band. Well, you're not going to go to Magic Kingdom, but if you wear glasses, I would buy a band to hold them on your head because there's stuff to see in the in the queue or in the ride that I missed because I'm blind as a bat without my glasses. Um, but oh, I mean, it was an okay coaster. It wasn't worth the getting up at six o'clock in the morning, you know, being online at seven a.m. to get the virtual queue and then waiting in line an hour to get yeah, to. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. It's not worth it. I mean, if you want someone ride, who ride loves it. Tron, I just don't think it's worth it. Right. It's not because the theming isn't even there. I mean, the theming is not even that good. The pre-show is like they put you in front of a glass and they're like, get ready to go. And then the, the glass fades away and you see yes. the ride. And it's like, that's cheesy. Really? It's like a frosted like... glass tech, um, piece of tech. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's 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 all black and blue. It's not. I mean, it looks cool, but they could have done like the posters in the uh, the queue are just posters. They could have really easily done a, a LED screen and had a move, mm-hmm. and that would have made the queue a little bit more interactive. But there's no real interaction in the queue. Um, it was just an upsetting ride. It was fun, but with the hype, it just was upsetting. Yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah. It was disappointing. So um, the thing I do have, I do have to gripe about Lightning Lane because when we went to ride a Jungle Cruise, it was a 45 minute wait. Yeah. And it's as soon as we got in line, it jumped up to 60. Yeah. And that's because you saw all the Lightning people. You were standing still and Lightning people are going, 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 going. Cha-ching, going cha-ching, down. cha-ching. That's yeah. what Disney and, sees. And then you're just sitting there waiting. And then an hour later, you're on Jungle Cruise. Yeah. I'm not a but, fan of that. Yeah. I, I we wrote it because it was Jungle Cruise, man. I mean, you got to ride Jungle Cruise. It sounds like Disney Plus, uh, Disney Genie Plus, excuse me, is going to go away at some point, and Lightning Lane is going to take over. Lightning Lightning Lane Plus, which is going to mm-hmm. just essentially be Fast Pass Plus, but you have to pay for it it's ninety days out. You buy your thing, and you're good. See, that's why I don't I don't understand the Genie Plus thing because all they had to do is if they wanted to charge for fast passes, just go, we're gonna charge you twenty dollars a day. Hell, um, Universal, I think it's an eighty dollar upgrade for a fast pass, but it's unlimited. You just yes. walk up to the ride and go. Yes. If Disney wanted to do that, I don't see why they can't can't couldn't so you, do that. You went both to Disney and Universal. Which one was more expensive in your opinion? Uh, what do you mean as far as like if Tickets. I want to go to Disney for the day, any of the parks, or I want to go to Universal, where am I going to be paying more money? Well, my son works for Universal, so I got a comp ticket. Yeah, uh, well, that doesn't so help. It doesn't help. I don't know what Universal charges. Uh, Universal, I think they're. Well, I'm, I'm not talking s- just the ticket itself. I'm talking about the experience, like everything. Um, I think Universal's easier. Let's talk ease of use. Okay. Universal is easier. The website is way easier to use. The 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 app, I think. Uh now it could be just because I was having issues. I had not really issues with my dis you know, like because of Universal, you type it in and, and it, boom, there it is. It just you don't have to look for things on the Universal app like you do the Disney app. Yeah. And on the fly, it was a lot easier to navigate. Okay. Um 
And it's two totally different experiences. Because when I was when I was rope dropping Universal, there's nobody there. There's like 30 people there. There's hundreds of people that rope drop Disney. Um, and you don't have to make reservations, which Disney's getting rid of the reservations. The 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 fast pass or express passes are the you just go. So yeah. if you want to ride an express pass lane, you just go. Yeah. Um and while you were there, some major news dropped. Dude, I was on the railroad when that dropped. The Walt Disney World Railroad or Walt Disney Mickey's World Runaway Railroad. Railway. The railway, the 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 Disney World. Because it was okay. I was like, oh shoot, that's back open. Let's go ride it. And it was you could you know sit down for 20 minutes and <laughs> see the park. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, is old. that space? Huh? You're getting old. Dude, that's what I did. I hit it hard in the morning. And when it started getting hot, I'm like, all right, I need to chill out for a couple of hours, find a cool place, find some cool stuff to do, um, and then go ride a couple more rides. And then that's my day. But yeah, the Star Cruiser. So what – was there any sense of mood change in the parks when that was – no, it was just – there was I when I was on the train, a couple in front of me were talking about it, and they were just like, "That's eh, basically the same thing as everybody else." Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to drive by there, but you don't see anything, right? There's nothing to see. So yeah, the Star Cruiser is closing down October first. Will be it'll be done by October first. September twenty eighth is the last cruise. I had messaged you and Jordan and said on January 24th, I got a some sort of like $700 discount. And I'm like, that's, that's nothing. That's not going to help me make a decision. So sometimes between sometime between February and now Disney's decided to close down the thing completely. Like it's not even worth offering discounts to people. Just close the damn thing is what their attitude is. And I don't, I don't know. I I because what you've talked about is if Disney's hemorrhaging money with the Fox buyout, that's or, part of it. Yeah, that that they can't afford to hemorrhage money on the Star Cruiser anymore, even if they're going to offer a discount. And I'm sure there's somebody in a back office somewhere has ran some numbers, and it's like it's going to if it, if we're not selling it for five thousand dollars, we're losing money. So October first is the start of their fiscal year. Mm-hmm. So for their fiscal year 2024. Four, I think that's when it starts. It's, uh, I think that's the year that that it corresponds with. They're not going to have any of that debt, or or they're not going to be in the the red anymore with that because it's just completely closed down. So that's that's one thing that's going on there. Another thing, and I have no clue if this is associated with that. They've got that little tiff right now with the governor. Who's to say that the plan is to close it down? change it up to make it a regular hotel with 100 rooms, cut down all of the theatrics, just make it a dinner show, reopen it in a couple years when all of this has died down and just use that for press to make the governor look bad. That the governor forced them to close it down? Yeah, because they want to say in their lawsuit, they want to prove that the governor is affecting their business to undo everything the governor has done with the Reedy yeah. Creek district. Gotcha. And for those that might not, they're living in a, under a, a rock. Reedy, Reedy Creek was set up as a special district, just like the villages and uh, where all the senior community is, just like Daytona 500, that whole raceway is a special district. Um, it's just to help control, you know, Disney can build their own roads. They don't have to tax the people of Orange County. All that kind of stuff. They 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 take care of it themselves. The governor came in and said, "No, we're because of this is this is tricky because it's like it does get into politics and we try to avoid that." But you know, well, the governor got his ass on his shoulders because of a stance Disney took. Yeah, and, and we don't and need Disney, to get into it. We can just Disney say Disney expressed their freedom of of opinion, and right. There's been court cases that say that companies can have have their right to say what they want to say, and the governor has. And the governor even has admitted it. Like, that's the thing that I don't understand. Has the governor just realized that they're going to lose the lawsuit? Because even this past week, after the lawsuit, normally when a law... <laughs> this is the... oh, right? Oh, normally after lawsuit. a lawsuit. Uh-huh. Did, did I get cut off? Yeah, you did. 
Yeah, normally with a lawsuit, when you're sued, you just shut your mouth. And the and like the corporate speak is like we don't have a comment, we don't mention, we don't talk about any ongoing lawsuits. The governor's out there and was admitting basically what's going on. So I'm wondering if he's he knows he's gonna lose the lawsuit. He knows that Disney's gonna get their thing back, but he's about to announce that he's running for president. And he's just like, I don't care. I'm just gonna fire up the base and say, mm -hmm. I've done this. You know, like if it's just like he's getting what he wants, he's gonna, you know, run for president and jump off of the the hype off of off of that. And then Disney's gonna get what they want, which is everything's just gonna go away that the that the governor's done. But by then, he's already running for president and it doesn't matter. Right. So I think that's going on. Anyways, all that to say, right now it's just a political move for Disney to just wipe that off the map and say this is just part of this whole thing, the lawsuit thing. Yeah. It sucks for us Star Wars fans, but I mean it makes sense. I I and sorry, it's a price I, I don't, thing, right? It's a price thing and it's an error thing. I think if they would have done it OT, which is the same thing everybody says about Galaxy's Edge, if they would have done it Tatooine instead of Batu, it'd have been that much awesome. More well, awesome. It's, it's interesting because David Quinn is right now doing his prototypes and production podcast. He's doing a whole series on the Rancor. Right. And he kind of hypoth hypothesized that at the start, Patrick slipped up in one of those meetings with fan uh, community mm -hmm. um, in one of those calls. And he said, the Rancor, oops, I didn't mean to say that. And so it was like, is it doomed from the start? Did they not have the hype at the beginning? And they couldn't control the train. It was already, you know, left the station. They didn't have control of it. And is that leading to the demise of the Rancor project and here remember they had that video with that kid from the Goldbergs who was just like what energy is he bringing to this thing because he was just like out in left field almost like he was on drugs oh we're having a great time here remember <laughs> he that did video? that for Tron too man I I, I kind of remember it they pulled it really really quick they pulled it fast and I think that's the reason why um YouTube removed the thumbs down button for some videos uh-huh because you could see that there was more thumb down than there was thumbs up. <laughs> oh, and so YouTube's Disney was, I don't know if Disney applied pressure, but YouTube's like, yeah, we need to, we don't want to be causing damage to companies. So we're just going right. to remove that thumbs down. It's especially somebody like Disney. But kind of going back, like, was it doomed from the start because they were not marketing it right? And maybe. I mean, that's, I mean, and, and, and just to bring up, this just hit my head. Uh, like when Dan Quayle ran for president, is it Dan Quayle or no yeah. Dukakis? Dukakis, and yeah. he was in a tank and he had a helmet on. People said he looked stupid, and that's people like that's why he lost because of that one picture. Yeah. So it, I, I, well, yeah, I can see that. The guy from New Hampshire who was like, Wah! what was that guy? He was the president of the Democratic. Um, party. I remember the Rob, Howard Shore. Howard Shore. Uh huh. He was like, we're. He had like the role, and he was like, we're going to take Hawaii. We're going to take Iowa. We're going to take Vermont. And he, at the end, he goes, Wah! Oh, and geez. like his whole campaign colla uh, collapsed after that. And it's just like, is that like, do you need the momentum, and you need to be smart with your marketing, right? And if you're not for something like this, is it doomed to fail? It probably was. I, I I think it was doomed to fail when people saw that it was five thousand dollars and uh, uh for an experience. When yeah. it first started coming out, you were hearing a thousand dollars a night. And even that was like, oh crap. But it was a little <laughs> bit do it was a lot more doable than five thousand. Yeah. I probably could have talked to wife and then let me go if it was two thousand dollars a night. Yeah. But five thousand a, a night, no way. That's a lot of money. And the thing, even I like being on the go or, I mean, I, I don't like stopping when I'm on vacation, but that's a vacation you don't stop. You're tw you're on 24-7 to get the full experience of that event. There is yeah. no stopping. If you sleep, you're missing something. Is it Howard Short? Now I'm, Howard Short is the composer of Lord of the Rings. That's not his name. <laughs> Dang it. But, I mean, because I talked to him. That guy that I met in Ogas, he said he was up till like one, two in the morning and up at seven and you were still going. It's like you sleep for like four or five hours and then you got to keep going. Yeah. Howard Star Dean. Cruiser. Howard Dean is the name. Anyways, going back to the Star Cruiser. 
Um, yeah, it's too expensive. The marketing sucked. Right. Um, I don't think Kylo Ren has the same appeal as Darth Vader. He doesn't. Darth Vader is the the quintessential Star Wars villain. His silhouette, yeah. his presence. Like he took the breath out of the room when he appears in Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, you I was talking to I, I was ordering something and some lady's like, Oh man, I love your tattoos. All my tattoos are Star Wars. She didn't say anything about Star Wars till she saw, saw the Darth Vader. Mm. So that's how iconic Darth Vader is in Star Wars. Yeah. And I know I understand that Lucasfilm wants to push their current property and they stepped away like the whole Blue Milk project that way back when they first acquired Lucasfilm, Disney, when they first acquired Lucasfilm, they had this whole Blue Milk project. And at one of the D23s, they had this presentation with boxes and it said Blue Milk coming soon. And then that quietly went away and they redid everything for Batu. And I think Blue Milk Project was supposed to be like a Tatooine land. Yeah. And then that's where they stopped. They put the brakes on it and they said, no, 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 no. We want to make it your Star Wars story, not their Star Wars story. Meaning, <laughs> you know, like Luke Skywalker story. We want you to be involved in. They also sold that that we would be able to get credits and make deals mm-hmm. with bounty hunters and there would be storylines. And then that I- quietly went away and became part of the galaxy uh the star cruiser and it went behind a paywall which is another thing i don't like i couldn't even get the play app to hack into thing it would hack into thing i mean now granted i might have been doing something wrong but to me it even feels like the hacking into things you could still hack into it but it didn't affect it didn't act in front of you like it used to now that may have been my bad but it was like what's going on i mean even galaxy's edge to me seems to it lost a little bit of its edge over the past five years now it might have been i was at a a special event and not during the normal day galaxy's edge lost its edge yes is that it's it's lost it dude i I, i'm gonna tell you something that i told my son because i told him harry potter world made me a harry potter fan yeah galaxy's edge isn't doing that for star wars yeah and it hit me because he went while we were while we were walking around. There's a there's an employee store at Universal, and he's like, "I'm like, can I get in it?" He's like, "Hell no, you can't get in there." But <laughs> he was like, "Wait here, I've got to go look for something, and I'll get you." I'll, I'll, um, but anyway, he brought a bought a wand for me in the store, and I went around Harry Potter World doing the stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was like, I don't see people doing that in Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. I, and and at the end of the day, I love Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And to see something like this fail at on the national level, it, it does damage the brand. It does say, oh, Star Wars is it's not working. Star Wars bad. You know, that's right. the message. And I don't want that. I might not be a fan of the price point, but I don't want it to fail because Star Wars will fail. And if Star Wars starts failing, they're going to invest less money into it. Right. And it's going to go away. It's going to become, you know, the Muppets come back every 10 years with the project and then they'll make a couple things and it'll go away. And it's just, I don't want Star Wars to become the Muppets like that. I love the Muppets and I don't like what's happened to the Muppets, but I definitely don't want Star Wars to do something like that. I don't, I don't think it will, but I mean, there's a chance. There's a chance that if they keep producing failures like this, it's going to because some corporate guy is going to say, oh, Star Wars is not good because we're not making money. It's not yeah. that they're not doing the right thing. It's that it's not making money. Mm-hmm. Sean Moynihan pointed that out in the post that I made. You know, that's he's afraid the message is going to be that. I mean, if they're going to, if they, if. If they're going to close the Star Cruiser and lose millions of dollars, who's to say they want to close Galaxy's Edge next? They're not. They're not going to close the, Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. But I was talking to people we when I was waiting in line to meet Tigger, of all people. Um, oh, I got to tell you my Tigger story when we get <laughs> you – know, don't let me forget my Tigger story. So, um, well, we were talking to people that were that had season passes. They lived in the Netherlands. So they were like, we're four hours from Paris. So we go to Paris pretty regular. And I'm yeah. like, do they have Star Wars in Paris? They're like, no. And I don't know if they're building it. Yes. 
that was supposed to be part of their two billion expansion in Euro Disney, but they're getting a frozen land. They're getting another land, but Galaxy's Edge is on pause right now. Yeah, see, they're like, we got frozen and we got Galaxy's Edge. I'm like, yeah, my five year old, six year old granddaughter loves Anna and Elsa, so why not build a frozen land? But Frozen yeah. Three's in development, so I mean, that that cash train keeps keeps chugging. Yep. So uh, let me tell you my my Tigger and Wendy the yes. Pooh story. Tell us, so tell us the we wonderful meet, story about Tigger. Yes, and Tigger's a wonderful thing. So I saw Tigger walk out while we were getting ice cream, and I was like, "Oh, Tigger's here!" And my son's like, "You're 47." <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like a little kid, and I'm like, "Dude, at this point in my life, I don't care if I look like an idiot. That's something that to show my happiness at something that makes me happy. I'm I'm over that." Um, so anyway, we went and we we saw that and we were like, oh yeah, Tigger, we can go meet Tigger. So, and it was Tigger and Winnie the Pooh. So we went and we met him and I had a red shirt on. And of course, Tigger's like pointing at me and then pointing at Winnie the Pooh. And then the photographer goes, y'all match. And then I go, I even have the belly. And Tigger loses it. Like, can you hear the Pooh, cast member? The cast member dressed as Tigger <laughs> freaking loses it. And you could tell it's a genuine laugh, That's not Tigger funny. laughing. It's the cast member That's laughing. That's funny. And he is just, I mean, and and for like five minutes, the whole time he is just like pointing at me and laughing and giving me hugs. And and then Pooh is just sort of like, he's trying to stay in character, but Tigger is just freaking losing it. And it just made for a great photo op. And um, That's awesome. It was, just, it was a cool moment. It's it, I always love moments like that when you can, have that special interaction with a cast member or somebody, you know, somebody that you kind of look up to or, you know, um, a famous person. But uh, yeah, it was kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that was my, that was, that was sort of made that half an hour wait to meet him worth it. Worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, I got to ride up front in Haggard's. Haggard's is an awesome roller coaster too. Yeah. Someday I hope to do that, but right now it's all Disney. It's all Disney. You dude, you yeah. I got the hookup, so it's all yeah, Disney. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Um, anything else? I think you saw that's Doc it. Brown. I did see Doc Brown. I saw Doc Brown. Um saw Betty Boop. Betty Boop was riding around in a car. That was kind of fun. Cool. Univer- I mean, they're both they're both totally different experiences. Because yeah, Universal, once- dude, I huh? One's more adultish. One's more childish. Right. One's fantasy. one's more thrill ride because you go to Universal and every ride has a locker to put your crap in. Yeah. Uh, I rode Velocicoaster and I don't think my seat got stuck. The the lap belt got that went down far enough because I was I was like coming out of my seat on the loops. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna fall out of this thing. Falling out. Yeah. I mean, it scared me to where I don't I didn't want to ride it again. I wanted yeah. to ride it again, but I didn't want to ride it again. It was that yeah. bad. Wow. But it was an awesome Velocicoaster is a good coaster too. But is there Velociraptors like waiting for you in different points? Uh, sort of the when you take off, you take off with Velociraptors. Oh, and okay. I think look, I, I was more worried about falling out of my seat than looking around. Plus, you're going really fast. I think it they do have some Veloci because you are in a Velociraptor enclosure when you're on the coaster. Mm-hmm. Because the walls look like a Velociraptor coaster. I mean, mm-hmm. Velociraptor enclosure. So I'm yeah. sure there's some statues of Velociraptors standing around. You just missed them because you're flying by so fast. Yeah, probably. But there is one part where you walk by. And you know how in Jurassic World, they keep the Velociraptor in that head cage thing. There's yeah. one in a head cage. And it's like, that's awesome. And you're two feet from it. Nice. Yeah. The Lost Continent closed. Yeah, the uh, Poseidon's Fury closed. And the rumors about that has me just as excited about Galaxy's Edge. It's a Legend of Zelda themed land. Ah, Tears of the Kingdom is awesome. Yeah. Hey, I my son closed Poseidon's Fury and he uh, they he called me like that morning and was like, dude, they're closing my ride. And within two hours, they were it was announced. And I heard on Galaxies that when they closed the Star Cruiser, they didn't let anybody know. Yeah, I think the Galaxy's Edge Star, sorry, the Star Cruiser was like a last minute, like, forget it. We're just closing it. Just close it at this point. So, but um, yeah, I, 
I think that they need to retheme because when you're walking through the uh, Marvel land, it's all old school Marvel stuff. Yeah. Because they can't update it. They're yeah. stuck. Yeah. Disney it it is weird. Them. Huh? Disney won't let them. No, they won't. But it is yeah. weird when you're walking through each park and there's like Mario thing. Because when you go to J the Japan Pavilion, there's like Mario. There's a Japan store and there's Mario stuff in there. In Epcot? In Epcot. <laughs> That's awesome. I and then wait. like they had Spider huh? I can't wait. And then they had Spider Man stuff at, at the World of Disney at, at yeah. uh what at Disney Springs. And then I'm going on Velocicoaster and there's Chris Pratt, and I'm like, what ride am I on? The Chris Pratt or part Chris of the Chris Pratt's on the TV. Oh, okay. So he's say. in pre show. He's in, in one of the pre shows. Yeah. Show scenes, and you're like, uh, uh, what coaster am I on? Because he's in oh, you prominently Guardians. in Guardians. Yes, and it's it's not like the dude from uh, the dude from Harry Potter and the the guy that plays General Crux is in Harry Potter. It's not that because he he looks Domino totally Gle different. Chris Domino Pratt, Gleason. those two move, huh? Domino Gleason. Yeah, he's too. He looks so different in both movies, but Chris Pratt Pratt looks the same in both yeah, movies. Chris so you're Pratt, just yeah. like. What am I doing? What yeah. ride am I on? And I'm like, oh no, he was in he was in Jurassic World. Okay, cool. Whoa. <laughs> I did ask last time. I didn't do it this time, but last time I was at Universal, I was like, is Bill and Ted still here? And they're like, no. Shaggy's like, no, man, they're not here anymore, man. You might could find a man, but I don't think they're here anymore. <laughs> I could do yeah. I could do Shaggy. I just can't do him right now. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, they're not here anymore. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, they're not here. Hey, Scoob, have you seen Bill and Ted anywhere? <laughs> that, that's, that was pretty much the interaction I had with them. Anyways, are we good? Yeah, Anything I'm good, else? man. Anything else, Dad? I don't think so. Good trip. Oh, yeah, huh? Good trip. Good trip. If anybody's looking for a DT Luke, great a DT Luke, hit me up. I need to sell mine. <laughs> Yes, you do. I, I need to sell it so I can buy something really, really, really awesome. Um, yeah. So buy his uh, his uh, DT Luke. Thank you for listening to the Smugglers Galaxy podcast. If you could leave a like and a five star review of the show anywhere you listen to our podcast, if it's allowed, it really helps us out and points people to our show. You can follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, send us an email or message us. We love feedback. We always love to make you part of the show. Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smugglers Galaxy logo. You could find him at the Rock the Forest podcast. And thank you to Levi Waterhouse for the music. Hasbro, re-release VC66, hashtag vote with your wallet. Pass on what you've learned. Be a positive force in the collecting community. Bye as DT Luke. This is the way. This is the way.